Putting waterfalls in a jar typically isn't easy. In this one, I'll show you how I used simple techniques to create twin waterfalls in a jar. Although this container itself isn't that small, turning it into a terrarium with a running waterfall inside of it is easier said than done. The challenge arrives whenever you gotta get the pump inside of the container. Now, if you have a large opening like this, that's fairly simple, but you need to be able to service it or replace it down the road because it's bound to have an issue at some point. And if you're not able to do that, then you're no longer going to have a waterfall. One of my favorite techniques is to drill a hole within the container and house the pump in a separate reservoir. Although it works well, it's kind of advanced and involves specific tools. Additionally, it can kind of take away from the aesthetic if all that you want is an environment within a jar. Even if you are able to pull this off, the defining factor and what it's always going to come back to is the pump. More explicitly, your options for small reliable pumps aren't that great. Take this mini USB one for example. It's the smallest one I was able to find so I was really excited. It's not it and unfortunately what you're going to find is that the smaller you go with these pumps, the louder they get. Unfortunately, I don't know of any small pumps that are completely silent, but I have a better option than what you just heard, and that's this one here. I've used it for various projects similar to this, and you'll just get a slight hum, so it's really not that bad. Now, that's a lot better if you ask me. That takes us back to concealing the pump in a way that it's actually usable. Many options I've shown before use a separate reservoir, as I already explained. I've also created individual structures for it to go into and piping systems. Those can get complicated, which is why for this one, I'm just gonna use the primary escaping material, lava rock. What I'll do is create a ring of rocks around the pump and upward. If I were to try to just straight up do this though, it would be kind of difficult. I thought I had a great solution by building a column around this paper towel roll, but unfortunately it was an oversight and the tube is just a bit too small. I think this box is a better solution. This cardboard block, which I sized to be just slightly larger than the pump, will make it easy to create a column out of lava rock that will still allow for full access of the pump. With a bowl of lava rock and hot glue, I was ready for work. Initially, I tried to build a ring around the guide, but I found it easier to do one side at a time. I should mention that hot glue isn't a viable long-term solution. That said, I like to use it when assembling structures like this. Inevitably, some of it got on the cardboard, and I had to separate this slab before I could continue onto the adjoining side. I propped it up with a different rock while I repeated the process. The only thing I did differently was leave a hole at the bottom. Here's a better look. As I finished the final side, I had to be mindful that every addition could stop the piece from fitting and place the subsequent stones accordingly. And with that, everything else the scape will be based on is done. We really gotta trust the process though, because right now this looks hideous. It's a lot more angular than I'd like, but with the right details, we should be able to get it looking good. We can't do any of that though, unless it fits into the container. With only hot glue holding it together, it's pretty delicate, so I'm just trying my best to be gentle here. Although it needs a lot more detail, like I said, it looks fine in the container, and the pump fits perfectly behind it. That means it's finally time to become a proper waterfall terrarium. That'll begin with more lava rocks and super glue. With these, I can simultaneously strengthen the structure and hide all the hot glue. The solution is simple. I took a handful of undesirable stones and broke them up to create lava rock dust. I then applied super glue over all the hot glue sections and small cracks. The dust adheres to this immediately, which makes an extremely seamless appearance. Plus, these elements will hold everything together indefinitely. I also like to have a brush on hand to dust off excess. However, what about the larger spots? Easy, just sprinkle in large stones first and then apply the other items as before. Also, remember that hole from earlier? Well, I have some window screen for that. A good and expensive alternative could be knitting mesh, but I had this already in my scraps. Anyway, I glued a square around the back side of the opening. Another item I had to account for is an airline splitter. More on the specifics of that later, but what I did was glue another rock where the spout will be. It has two separate holes, which correlate to each section of the airline. Other than still being a little boxy, I think the lava rock column turned out really well. None of the seams are visible, we got screen where the water is going to pass through, and overall I think it just looks like a very cohesive piece. And that's one of the reasons why I went with lava rock. 
It's extremely easy to combine it together and make it look like a single piece when compared to other stones. That means we can get it into the container for good. Even though it has a slight wobble, it may remain where it is, but I would prefer to secure it in place with silicone just to ensure nothing happens. I simply applied a dab near the top of each side and flipped it over while the silicone cured. With the base hardscape secured, we can do a water test. I already hooked up the pump to the vinyl tube it came with, as well as the airline splitter on the end. This isn't anything special, and I put it there simply to split the waterfall in two. That's already nested behind the hardscape, which means we can see how this looks with water. Not really what you want to see, but pretty much what I expected. Simply dialing back the pump has it looking nearly perfect, but with the addition of moss and other elements, it will be even better. With that taken care of, all of the hard stuff is out of the way. But you may be wondering, how are we going to take a column like this and make it look like a seamless environment? Well, it's actually quite simple. Before doing anything, I cleaned off the scape to remove debris. I rinsed off more lava rock for the false bottom as well. I used a few large chunks to fill most of the space near the structure. I knew these wouldn't look right from the front, which is why I filled the rest with the smaller bits. To keep construction easy, I decided to use sphagna moss for the barrier. After rehydrating it, I used it to fill cracks around the column. I later removed this part up front because I didn't want it to be visible. Anyway, I topped off most of the false bottom with it. I realized there are open areas so some particles will pass through, but it should be alright because it's mostly in areas away from the pump. The entire time I've been making this, I've been extremely conscious about how you're actually going to view the terrarium. The way you see it right there is how it's going to be seen, so I need to build it based on that perspective. And as you'll see, really it's just on this back side here that I need to build up topography, and with that it will make the entire thing look much more seamless. I built up the height and basic slope with a few stones. Between these I added more sphagnum moss to bridge the gaps. Thus far most of the stones were of a similar size, which isn't ideal. I worked in a few smaller ones to create a better sense of scale. With the back addressed, I moved to the front and added a few outcroppings. It probably all makes a little more sense now, but as you all know, the thing that's truly going to tie it together is the moss. I just went outside and collected a few varieties. I rinsed them off, and I even went through with a tweezer and picked out any debris. The one I think will truly set this design off is the tree moss. Moss likes to grow where it's wet. I realize it's also moss, but this sphagnum does a great job of wicking water and thus growing moss. With this, no additional dirt or substrate is required. Needless to say, I situated the moss in these areas. Locations where the waterfalls will flow were also ideal for it. To better get a sense of all of that though, I filled the reservoir and dialed in the flow. It actually looked cool without anything, but I really didn't want to see the splitter. Moss hit it with ease. It also looked good in some of these crevices. Now that's night and day from how it was before, but you all know how it is with me. It's all about the details. The simple addition of these spiderwood branches around the hardscape provided much needed variation in texture and color. You'll see that I kept a pretty consistent direction while placing them. Furthermore, I thought it would benefit from different foliage too. Anubius non a petite to be specific. After separating the mother plant, I peppered them in key locations. The only thing left to do was cord management. Sure, I've put waterfalls in a jar before, but I think this one by far would be the easiest to replicate. Although I still wouldn't consider this a beginner build, most of the techniques and materials I've used are pretty accessible, and I think that with a little bit of finesse and practice, anybody could do this. 
Something I totally forgot to add, and it will probably be fine without it, but you'll have best results if you do include it, is charcoal. I would have put it right above the sphagnum moss layer, but honestly, I just got a lot going on right now and I totally forgot. Additionally, you may be wondering about the lid situation. This jar, I don't know what happened to its lid, so I'm not gonna include one here. And it's probably better in some cases because when you have these waterfalls in a system like this, you're best off having a slightly vented lid, otherwise it's condensated most of the time. So if you want max visibility, don't include a lid or have one that's slightly vented. All things considered, I'm really pleased with how this one turned out. I think it has awesome movement, cool texture and colors and things of that nature. And I believe it perfectly illustrates what's possible within the nature design format, even with simple techniques.